get confirmation that we can see the PowerPoint. Yes, sir. Yep. Very good. All right, signal converters. Uh, it's not a long one, like 20 something slides or something like that. So not too, not too heavy duty. So where is this leading us from here? Signal converter. So we talked about uh, different types of signal converters. Again, starting from primitive types of signal converters, pneumatic ones, mechanical ones, and then working our way up to analog to digital, digital to analog converters. So kind of the evolution of signals and technology. So let's have a look, see what we have here. Okay, our objectives, describe signal converters, which are used for signal transmission or in signal transmission systems. Describe the applications for signal converters and describe components of signal converters. Okay, so what is a signal converter? Signal converters, of course, are used to convert a signal, right? So this may be a conversion of different types of signals, whether they be mechanical signals, electrical signals, or pneumatic signals, or changing the signal's range. And this is the, the classic uh, input-output type of uh, application, except done, of course, uh, electronically. And we call that linear interpolation. There are also protocol converters that allow cross-vendor communication. So we talked about signal transmission in the last set of ILMs and a few different protocols, and different voltage levels that they send information in. Uh, when we get different manufacturers, different protocols, in order to be able to communicate properly with each other, they need uh, a converter. So in the case of like RS-232, uh, 485, they would have like a standard converter that converts between standards. But if we're talking about Modbus or Heart or Foundation, uh, things like that worked into our control system, we would use protocol converters. So those are later on in the slideshow, but uh, we'll start off basically with uh, the basic ones and then we'll build up to that. So different converter types here, basically, long story short, they'll take an input signal, whether it's electronic, uh, mechanical, optical, pneumatic, apply some type of function to it in a, in a converting uh, uh, module, I guess, if you want to say that, and then give us an output signal that matches what we need. So we can bring in electrical, we can put out pneumatic, or we can bring in pneumatic and put out electrical, et cetera, et cetera. There's just about as many combinations as there are options. So signal converters convert the signals that are different than the communi communication method of the signal. And they also convert ranges. So this is kind of a repeat from the previous slide. They come in three general categories that the ILM is going to address. And we'll look at them in uh, little chunks, starting out with analog to analog converters. Then we'll have a little chunk on analog to digital converters. And then finally, the last one there is digital to digital. And this is where we get into the uh, some trauma that was probably introduced last year when you did uh, resolution and analog to digital converters and digital analog converters, etc. So let's look. Okay, analog to analog signal converters convert physical signals of one type into another or rearrange the signal, whether it be mechanical, electrical, or pneumatic. And again, they also convert ranges. So analog signal converters, and again, we're starting up with analog and we're working our way up to digital. Analog comes in three basic types. They are, oh, hi, Matthew, nice to, nice to see you. Don't see you here too often. Uh, mechanical, we'll look at a couple of examples of what a mechanical converter looks like. And of course, we have pneumatic converters and analog electrical converters. And we'll have a look see. Okay, I'm not going to get into the dirty details of all the different types of analog to analog type signal converters. So I snipped uh, the diagrams out of the ILM and I kind of put them here on the page just to give you an idea of what uh, what type of mechanical uh, machines are involved in the different types of conversion. So here in the top left hand corner, we have a Lincoln Lever system here where we have inputs and outputs being changed by virtue of their relationship on the fulcrum. Uh, changing the length of levers. If you remember from, I don't know, way, way back when, first year, second year, when you're doing chart recorders and you're calibrating chart recorders and there was angularity and all that kind of stuff. Well, we did that conversion mechanically by changing the length of different levers here. Same, same kind of thing here with uh, pneumatic to mechanical in the top right-hand corner. This is probably uh, 
more like a chart recorder for you guys, I guess. We take a pneumatic signal, input pressure coming in, and then we convert it into a mechanical signal that operates a pen. And this really is a chart recorder. This is kind of contained inside of here, but mechanical uh, driven pen from a pneumatic source. Then down here we have, uh, what is this, uh, boosters, it looks like boosters or regulators where we are going to be converting pneumatic signals. So we have a different input signal coming in, a higher pressure coming in, and a lower or higher pressure coming out. So we're converting pneumatic signals or converting pressures. Last type of analog, uh, mechanical style here is mechanical to pneumatic. And you see this wonderful thing here and it sort of represents a uh, sort of represents a, an I to P or what would this, this would be like a, a, one of those DP13A type transmitters, uh, something like that. So different types. Okay, analog electrical signal converters. The one that you're probably most familiar with, of course, is the I to P or current pressure transducer. It is one of the most common electrical signal converters out there. Uh, send 4 to 20 milliamps into the I to P, we provide air supply pressure and it outputs a signal that drives our final control elements or our valve. So analog electrical, electrical signal converter, classically uh, the ID, I to P is the uh, great example of, of that. So electrical to pneumatic. Other types of electrical converters include, and we're not going to go into them all together, but they're usually done uh, via some type of a card in the rack, but they include different conversions, uh, current to voltage, voltage to current, frequency to current, and back, and also resistance to current. So one of the more common ones that you'll see out there is probably a, a thermocouple card. You may have seen something like this where the thermocouple will come and land in here, and the thermocouple, of course, is uh, changing resistance, and we want milliamps to come out of this, so we'll have a, an electrical converter that does that. Uh, what the heck is I got this in here? Oh, analog electrical signal converter. So again, this is uh, where the trauma from third year comes back to you, where we take an analog signal, something that is measured from uh, a transmitter, for example, and we have to put it into the PLC. So we have to take an analog signal, convert it into a digital signal, so it can go into our processor. Our processor does a bunch of math, sends it out as a digital signal, which gets converted into analog by a digital to analog converter, and that signal gets sent out to our valve. I will just get your toes wet a little bit, remembering from last year when we talked about uh, resolution and number of bits and volts per step. Um, there's some things mentioned in the ILM that will probably cause you trauma and fear and heartache. We talked about uh, rounding values when we're talking about bit conversions and truncated values when we're talking about bit conversions. Um, just things that you you kind of want to remember. The main goal here is is by the end of this you're going to realize how do we get a how do we get a an analog signal or a signal from a transmitter and how do we get it into something that we can use for the PLC program. What does it look like when it gets converted? Uh, you know if we're bringing four to twenty milliamps in or milliamps in, how many how many bits are coming out? and things like that. And this is gonna play into the control systems uh, course as well, because we're gonna obviously be doing configurations uh, where we have to uh, interpolate or extrapolate or convert different types of signals into different types of numbers so that the, the program and the, uh, the programming that we create in control systems will work. So anyway, long story short, a little bit too much talking there. Okay, that leads us up to step three, uh, evolutionary wise here. Uh, we're talking about analog, analog, and we had analog to digital, and now we're talking about straight digital converters. And the previous five or six slides were recently added into version 21 of the IOM. Um, version, whatever the previous version was to 21, uh, which I hope most of you are running right now, basically started right here. So a couple of the slides before you would have seen in the older version, um, but most of that wasn't in the older version. The older version started right about here. But here's where the meat and potatoes is uh, for us, because we're now in fourth year uh, at the top of the ladder, so to speak. 
So this is where current technology resides. So three types of digital signal converters include media converters, which are sometimes called repeaters, standard converters, which are sometimes called bridges, and protocol converters, which are sometimes called gateways. And we'll look at them individually. Okay, the first type, of course, uh, media converter. So media converter is the simplest type of converter, converter, sorry, and they convert one medium to another. What kind of medium are you talking about? We're talking about physical medium. So how does the signal get from A to B? Is it wire? Is it fiber? Uh, et cetera, et cetera. So a common example of a media converter is changing shielded twisted pair wire to fiber or shielded twisted pair to coaxial. Um, they do not necessarily need to conform to any particular communication standards. They just they just do their job. So uh, a common example that you would see uh, something like this in, maybe not in an industrial application, but something that you can wrap your brain around at home. If you're on uh, Shaw or TELUS, uh, Shaw particularly, uh, your signal for your internet comes into your house through a coaxial cable. It screws into the back of your modem and then out of your modem, you go to your computers with Cat5. So that's a type of media converter. We're, we're converting from coaxial cable into a Cat5 cable. So wherever you're changing from one type of media to another, that's what a media converter will do for you. Second type, standard converter. And before I talk, just have a look at the picture in the corner here. And what's the first thing that comes to mind when you see something that looks like this? Michael. Go ahead, Michael. Your mic is off. We cannot hear you. Or are you just stretching your cartoon hand? All right. Couldn't hear you, so. Okay, second type oh, of standard. Oh, oh sorry, uh, <laughs> I muted. <laughs> so the PowerPoint you uploaded to the course content is not the yeah. latest one you presented today. It looks That's like right. missing a few pages. That's right. I mentioned that earlier in the PowerPoint uh, that my my course, that platform, Blackboard, uh, I have no more gigabytes of space, so I cannot copy any new information into that course. And I'm too scared to delete things out of the course. Uh, so we're working on that. If necessary, I'll find a way to get you uh, copies of the updated PowerPoints. But I'm very impressed that you continuously update the content. That's awesome. Well, I got it. I got to try, and uh, they tend to keep me on my toes with updates. All right, so moving forward, I was asking if anyone had any thoughts about what comes to mind when they see a picture like this. Uh, this is like the, the Viator modem, for example, that you use to connect to transmitters so you can do heart communication. Same, same sort of kind of idea. Uh, this particular one, as you can see here, USB to RS-232. So USB, RS-232, RS-485, Ethernet, these are all standards. And I guess I should maybe have said uh, the Viator modem because the Viator modem is actually a protocol converter. But um, a good way to tell a standard converter is by the different ends of the cable, usually. But at any rate, standard converters, also called bridges, will convert from one standardized signal to another standardized signal. So we talked about uh, signal transmissions in the last ILMs, uh, three to uh, five to 15 volts or whatever it happens to be, depending on the standard RS-234, uh, 232 or 485 or whatever it is, those are the standards. And if we wanna communicate in between them, we need a standard converter. Last but not least here is protocol converter, sometimes called gateways. And their function is to be able to allow communication between devices that have different protocols. Uh, different protocols uh, include Modbus, uh, Foundation, Heart, Ethernet, uh, all of the ones that you can see here. Uh, we'll dabble with some of these ones in this course. Um, but there's lots of different protocols out there. Uh, if you want to relate this to something that you would see in the field, if you ever open up a PLC cabinet, 
and you look at the rack in the PLC cabinet, and uh, you may see a, a card that looks like this that has a heart written on the bottom of it. You might have another one next to it that has a field bus written on it. And then you might have other ones that don't have anything on that, which means that your control system will take point to point inputs um, and convert them either into a heart function using the heart card or field bus using a field bus card or mod bus using a mod bus card. But the idea here is to take the input signals from the field from the transmitters and convert them uh, into something that the, the program is going to use. Okay, so where and what do we use converters for? I kind of addressed most of this as we were talking through them, but applications include converting physical signals. So like an I to P, which changes pressure to current or current to pressure. Linear interpolation, uh, fancy way of saying changing the range of the output relative to the input. Um, this is gonna make the most sense to us as we move forward here where we take a milliamp value from a transmitter and then we convert it into uh, a binary analog value uh, when we're doing programming and that'll be the next thing that you'll see when we talk about uh, control systems plc part b uh, talks about uh, analog input and analog output and digital input and digital output and how we do the conversions of the math there uh, converters also used for distance extension noise immunity or isolation um, this is where the term repeater makes sense. If we're talking about distance extension, uh, repeaters, you know, you get the signal so far, then the next node will transmit the signal again another distance, and then there'll be another node which can transmit again uh, another distance. So it'll take four shorter distances, add them all together into a much larger distance. So this is what a repeater does. Uh, it can also make STP data travel further. Uh, STP is converted to fiber. Then of course, it gets better noise immunity and isolation, electrical isolation, and much farther traveling distance. Remember, STP can only travel, you know, uh, I don't know the number off the top of my head, but let's call it thousands of meters, whereas fiber can go kilometers and kilometers. So converting between mediums allows us to travel farther. Uh, if it's fiber, for example, uh, no more electricity, so better noise immunity and isolation. So different applications, of course, many different ones. Uh, protocol translation, another application, gateways like your shell box, uh, will allow communication be between equipment of different uh, vendor flavors or types. And lastly, when we're talking digital, digital uh, microprocessor interfacing, so converting analog signals from transmitters into digital so that the control system can use them, and then taking the digital values or the math that the uh, processor has uh, has done on a on a signal and then can bring it back into analog so that it can go out to a final control element. So all kinds of different applications. Okay, different components about converters. So obviously many, many different types of converters out there, mechanical, electrical, pneumatic, et cetera, et cetera. So all kinds of different components depending on which type uh, we're talking about, but they will all share some basic general categories of, of uh, elements. So they're all going to have an input interface. So somewhere where an input signal comes to. There's going to be conversion components, whether it's electronic circuitry, whether it's links and levers, whether it's bellows, uh, whatever it happens to be, some kind of conversion components. There's going to be a method of uh, getting into the particular uh, piece of equipment and being able to calibrate it or to configure the component. So whether it's uh, whether it's link and levers, whether it's uh, a pot where you're adjusting the electronic signal through through a pot, or uh, anything like that. So some way some way to adjust the ins and outs. Uh, we're talking about analog to digital. Uh, you hear terms like trim, and uh, that's facilitated through calibration or configuration components of a converter. And then, of course, there's going to be output interface components. So we take a signal in, we convert it somehow, mechanically, electrically, whatever. We have uh, a place where we can calibrate or configure that particular piece of equipment. And then, of course, it generates the output that we're going to use for the device on the other end. Okay, so repeat, I guess, basically what I said, the 
these elements of uh, signal converters. Into input interface allows the input signal to connect. The conversion components modify the signal to the desired output signal. Calibration configuration components facilitate the adjustment of the input or output signals to errors. If there's a protocol conversion necessary, the configuration component will facilitate it as well. Uh, again, through configuration parameters uh, in a software program, something that you will experience uh, probably in the lab. And then, of course, the output interface components allow the physical connection of the output to the converter. So pretty straightforward stuff here, I hope. Look at that. The end. Short and sweet today. Uh, not much mind-blowing stuff going on there. I don't know if I can figure out how to get my screen off here. Stop sharing.